don't know what that noise was. Doesn't the PlayStation have a lot of great first party exclusives? I think it does. Actually, right now is the best time to do this because with Ghost of Tsushima just releasing, we're at the end of this console generation. So rather than me try and do a video like that last one with just uh, oh, games I can't live without, just, uh, how about I just do the exclusives and go through my top 10 favorites for this entire system? Since we are at the end of this generation of systems and Ghost of Tsushima being probably the last big first party release, I'm pretty safe to just make that video now. I'm really excited to do it because while I have talked about a lot of the games I'm holding under my arm right now, there are a couple that I never got to talk about that I really love. This list, just my personal opinion and my preferences and my experiences with these games. Where they rank on my list doesn't invalidate how they may rank on your list. We all have different wants, needs, and experiences with video games, you can leave your list down below. Don't shame me for mine. Don't shame me. With all that said, how about we just get stuck into it? I'm excited. It's been a while since I've made a PlayStation video. It's good to be back. You know why Raycon thinks they're awesome? <laughs> Probably because their earbuds start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. Okay. Maybe they offer their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns. Like, good for you, Raycon. Way to show off. But uh, do you know why I think Raycon is awesome? Other than the fact that they sponsor my channel every month and it really helps me out. Also because I use these things daily. Even celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Gus Johnson, and Arlo, they're all obsessed with their Raycons. And I'm pretty sure that Arlo doesn't even have ears. I think. <laughs> yeah, I listen to my Raycons when I'm out here in the garage, pretending to lift weights, but actually just listening to podcasts. It's good when I'm out here so that I'm not blasting music for all my neighbors to hear and judge me for my taste. Sup, Gary? I, I work on the internet. It's a whole thing. Raycon's everyday E25s, these bad boys, are their best model yet. <sighs> so it's actually really hot out here. Um, so if you wouldn't mind clicking that link below or going to buyraycon.com forward slash beat-em-ups to get 15% off your order, I'd appreciate it. So I could go back inside, get on with the video. All right, I'm technically cheating right off the bat. While I do have some special mentions near the end of this list, I didn't just want to throw Astrobot into a special mention. So instead, it's just my unofficial number 11. The PlayStation VR and I have had a lot of good times together. Just none of those experiences were good enough to crack the top 10. That said, this game is incredible. I have reviewed it once already on the channel and went through how much I absolutely adored it. But to summarize really quickly, this game feels like a Nintendo game in every sense, from just the at its core fun gameplay to the cutesy visuals and just the unique approach the developers took to designing each level. If you love all of those fantastic Nintendo platformers and you also have that interest in VR, this is the perfect blend of both of those things. It is by far one of the best VR games I have ever played and deserves to at least be talked about in this video. Death Stranding is my number 10 on this list. This might upset some people. I actually really enjoyed this game. It's not perfect and it has a lot of flaws and chapter three is very slow, but there's also a lot I loved about this game. I enjoyed my experience playing Death Stranding so much that when I finally did finish the game, which took me hours and weeks after launch, I wrote up a whole script for a review and I tweaked that script and I kept going back to that script and I just couldn't decide what I wanted to say because everything I wrote felt like I was trying trying to justify why people didn't like the game and it didn't really come together. So I never ended up making the video even though I did write a script that in the end I was very proud of. What I really tried to tackle in the review that didn't end up happening is why the game is so slow paced. And I feel like if I summarize it, it's not gonna have the same meaning, but here we are. In the world they now live in, Sam Porter is a one in a million kind of guy. So when you're given that job to trudge from one side of the United States to the other, it's a dangerous, but also very boring job, which is why he didn't want to do it. And I believe that Kojima wanted you to feel in the first few chapters how boring his job was. 
and it worked. Yeah, it was very boring, and a lot of people couldn't even get through the first few chapters, and I don't blame anyone for that. But at about the fourth chapter, Sam finds himself getting tangled up in a storyline much bigger than he anticipated when he accepted the job. I just instantly got engrossed at that point. I went from almost giving up on the game to there being not a chance of me putting it down. The action, and especially the story, had me totally gripped and immersed in this world. It's very interesting to look at it retrospectively with the current climate we're dealing with now. In this world, everyone lives behind closed doors. You travel miles to get to these places and no one even bothers to open their doors and come and meet you face to face. Everything is digital. The world runs on likes and working together as a community, but through the digital world. A lot of people criticize that as Kojima trying to make some weird statement about the way the world is heading. And here we are just months later and this game couldn't be more relevant than it is now. By the end of this game and the final moments of storytelling, I was in tears and not many mediums from movies, TV shows to video games have moved me to the point of tears. Oh, I was, I was struggling to hold them back. Needless to say, I was invested and I really enjoyed the game. I'd love to dive further into this game, but I don't know, maybe there's another chance somewhere down the line. The Final Fantasy VII Remake. This one might be a lot higher on most of your lists, but I think you'll understand when I say, uh, the reason why it's lower on mine, I don't have nostalgia for the game. I never really played it back in the day. I didn't get very far, and I really don't remember anything that I played. Final Fantasy IX resonated with me a lot more. I adored Final Fantasy IX. From the moment I played it, and replayed it, and replayed it, I was in love with that game. Final Fantasy IX was, for me, what Final Fantasy VII is to the rest of the world, it seems like. So when this remake came around and the entire world exploded with excitement, there was me thinking, Shame it's not Final Fantasy IX. <laughs> and I didn't think when I played it, it would ever hit a top 10 list for me because I didn't have that nostalgia. But this remake, it's freaking good. As someone who doesn't hold the original very close to his heart, I feel like they did a great job remaking it and retelling the story. Oh, the combat is perfect. I have never experienced a real-time action combat system being Ugh perfected in this way. Switching between all the characters, taking those split seconds to slow down time and plan your next move. For those that did finish it, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say they really focused on the characters' fates and them wanting to change their own fates. And I feel like, considering they really wanted to expand on this entire universe, the most interesting way to do that would be to shake things up a little bit and having the characters themselves decide to change their own fates and change the outcome over what was predetermined for them, that predetermined story being the original game was a very clever way of not really breaking the fourth wall, but having these characters break out of their expectations from the fans and people that played the original game and go in a new direction. A very clever way to shake things up and make things a little different. I just love what they did in throughout this entire game, but specifically so towards the end. Where's my horizon? Zero Dawn. Oh, there it is. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That's the next one. This one made it to number eight, even though it almost didn't even make it onto the list. Horizon Zero Dawn, don't get me wrong, is an incredible game. For some reason, it didn't hit with me initially. When I first played it, I think I was just at that stage where I was really burnt out on open world games. And try as I might, I couldn't get invested in Horizon Zero Dawn. And then I put the game down and I came back to it like a year later and played a little bit more and then put the game down again and then finally came back months later and finished it. So I played it in three installments spread across like two years, but recently the game was ported to PC and it's getting a sequel. So I'm seeing this game pop up everywhere again and I'm seeing gameplay of it and it looks incredible. And I'm beginning to look back at this game and wonder how I couldn't have just been enamored by it because everything I'm seeing about it now looks like a game I really want to play. So I think back to the original idea for this video being games that I can't live without on the PlayStation 4 before I tweaked what I was doing here a little
little bit, and I realized that if there was a game I couldn't get rid of right now, it's this one, because I need to give it another chance. Specifically so, before the sequel comes out. I actually gave Days Gone a pretty extensive review in a video I made all about zombie games I really enjoyed, because I really enjoy zombie games. It's a whole genre in its own. But Days Gone was the height of the zombie game craze, and it nailed a lot of concepts that zombie games were trying to push for for years. The biggest one being the zombies. The way that they interact with you and the environment and the sheer amount of them pouring onto the screen at one time. My golly gosh, it is so great to have a good zombie game on the PlayStation 4 and having a console that can process this many zombies running at my face at one time. Now I'm looking at the PlayStation 5 and its SSD like, what day's gone too? Let's step up the crazy. This game also wasn't perfect and a lot of people couldn't get into it and I can totally I totally understand that. The game did drag its feet a little bit, especially with the story, but the biggest draw to the game for me, the zombies. It's just, it was so fun. It was so fun at its core. I do hope they make a sequel for this one. I just really enjoyed it. Oh, look at the new boy stepping on up. Go to Tsushima. Again, I haven't finished this game yet. I've been playing it since launch day, and the only reason I haven't finished it is because at some point while playing, I decided I wasn't gonna bother rushing through it to review it. I was just gonna play it at my own leisure. You can blast through the main story and probably knock it out in a day or two, but there are so many extra little things that you can do and discover and mess around with. For one, all of the side tales with the other characters you find along your journey, all of the epic samurai fights where if you win you learn a new technique and they're always hosted in these really cool locations and then just leveling myself up to becoming the most skilled and badass samurai possible the game is so beautiful that it's the first game I've actually ever cared about using the in-game camera to take photos of my environment Oh gosh. But in Ghost of Tsushima, I've been doing that all day because it's so beautiful to look at. So many dynamic colors and lightings and weather effects. It is a gorgeous game to behold. The gameplay is also perfect. I don't know what else I could ask from it. I'll say that I have so many different gadgets and abilities and special techniques that even now halfway through the game, I feel pretty indestructible. I wouldn't say it's a hard game, but it's fun. It's fun. Fun in every sense of the word. I hope Sucker Punch takes this game and builds upon it to give us something new, fresh, and even more exciting in a sequel game set in this world. They made infamous games and now all of a sudden they make this? That's such a, I don't know. I'm proud of you guys. Good job. You be the new naughty dog. You keep this up. <laughs> Good job. I don't know if I could take any PlayStation top 10 list seriously if the person doing the list didn't include Uncharted somewhere. I'm gonna bundle Uncharted Collection and Uncharted 4 just... I gotta stop breaking these cases today. Just into the same spot on the list. Uncharted Lost Legacy. We just put this over here and we'll talk about these two. <laughs> the first Uncharted I played was Uncharted 2. Skip the first one and it's a little rough going back to it. That said, it is nice to go back and see where the story began. It really took off running in the second game. Uncharted 2 has one of, if not the greatest opening to a video game ever. Climbing up through this train will teach you pretty much everything you need to know about climbing and dealing with the in-game mechanics for the rest of the adventure too. So both in the story and the pacing and the gameplay mechanics, this first part of the game just sets everything up, teaches you everything you need to know, tells you everything you need to know, and just good luck with the rest of the game. They take that momentum and it just bleeds straight into the third game. The third game, I love it, and it's honestly comparable if not equal to the second one. It's just that the third one didn't really have that train moment. It didn't really have the equivalent of some Something new and it was just more of the same but that same is so good that I would take more of the same and I loved it the fourth is in a whole nother level of video game and I would say they perfected the game in the fourth it was just way more cinematic it was a shorter experience to kind of tie up the end of the uncharted story it just felt a little bit more like I was having my hand held through the adventure and I was sort of experiencing the epic story rather than taking part of the epic story. It was like interacting and playing an incredible eight hour long movie and watching the story unfold and having some really cool moments like with the Crash Bandicoot playing at the game in the game. That was pretty cool. Maybe my standards were set too high after Uncharted 2. And don't get me wrong, as I said, I love Uncharted 4. 2, 3, and 4, 
all really great games. Just like the second the most. Hey! I hate steel cases. I'm gonna keep this one very short because out of all the games on my list today, Spider-Man is one that I really worked hard on a huge review. And I love how that video turned out. It's like a big retrospective on Spider-Man games in general and my love for them growing up and how we eventually got to here. Go watch that video if you want to hear my thoughts on it. And a reason why it's so high on the list, other than the sheer quality of the freaking thing, I love the swinging mechanic. There's something very therapeutic and relaxing for me in just swinging around New York. And they nailed it in this one. It's the best swinging in a Spider-Man game since the Spider-Man 2 movie game. And I go into all the reasons why in that freaking video. But if you haven't played this one, you're missing out. And I can't wait for the Miles one that's coming on PlayStation 5. Oh, it's it's gonna. Mm. Oh, Persona, Persona, pa pa Persona. I know it's on PlayStation 3 as well. Sh well, actually, Royal didn't go to. Yeah, I'm totally in the right. I haven't even finished it. I know, I know. I'm, I'm a fake gamer. I'm fake. I'm a fake. I adore the Persona series. Persona 4 is by far my favorite JRPG of all time. Hands down, period, full stop. I sunk 50 hours into Persona 5 and I loved every minute of it. But it was at a time where Kim and I just began dating when this game came out and I was flying a lot from Texas to back to Canada, back to Texas, back to Canada. And I actually, when I was flying back and forth, took my PlayStation 4 with me in my bag every time because I was trying to play this game. But it just kind of all became a bit much and I just didn't have the time and I forgot that I was playing the game and then months went by and I realized I had never finished it. And just when I thought, oh, it is time to get back into that game, they announced this. I can't tell you how insanely excited I am to play this game, but it's like 150 hours long. I don't have time. <laughs> I should probably talk about the game itself. So in Persona games, you find yourself playing as a bunch of school kids who suddenly find themselves stumbling in this dark, surreal world where they have abilities and they can help shape the real world via this surreal world. And Persona 5 focuses on hearts and people's true characters, who people really are and how they really feel underneath their facade. And while I do love the story in these games and I also adore the JRPG combat in these games, what really gets me is the real life sim management element to the games. You play on a day and night calendar cycle. Over the course of about a year and each day it's up to you what you do, where you eat, who you talk to, what relationships you decide to build and I love it so much and need to finish it. And weirdly, for as big as they are and how popular they are, I feel like they don't get enough love. Play it if you have a I spare 150 hours. What needs to be said about Last of Us Remastered? Yeah, maybe it's a little bit of a cop out because technically it's a playtest of threat. Shut up! <laughs> Don't care. The storytelling is incredible. The characters are so rich and their development throughout the game is just awe-inspiring. The visuals for the time were fantastic and even now they hold up really well. But when it all comes down to it, it's that gameplay. The thing that really blew me away playing this game for the first time was how non-scripted everything felt. I'm not, I don't have gameplay at this moment. So I don't know what my editor is going to do because this is something that happened to me, I don't know, seven years ago on my PlayStation 3. But I remember going into this one area full of enemies and I was sneaking around and I saw Ellie pick up a brick and she was just holding onto it. But the enemies caught onto me being there and they started to shoot at me. But then I ran out of bullets in my gun and it started clicking. And the NPCs heard the sound of my gun clicking and started walking towards me because they knew I was out of ammo. And something about that moment seven years ago blew my little mind. <laughs> but what made it better was I charged at them to try and start beating them down fisticuff style and right as one of them tried to come up behind me Ellie threw that brick she was holding and caught him in the side of the face took down that guy, turned around, took down that guy it felt like a moment that would be really hard to try and replicate or get gameplay of now that it happened seven years ago even now I can't think of many games that have given me that same experience and yes there was a sequel and yes it improved on the gameplay in many ways but this gameplay to me was so ahead of its time that even those improvements now, like adding a dodge mechanic, doesn't really change or shake up that original core format too much because it doesn't need to. It's perfect the way it is. So yeah, it's a little smoother now in the sequel, looks a little flashier, but the same game is still there. That's how good it was.
Okay, before number one, I said I'd do some special mentions, so really quickly, Gravity Rush, both the first one remastered and the second one, Detroit Become Human was really great, and then Ratchet and Clank, which, oh, yeah, so close to almost making the top 10. Oh, but the number one, my favorite game, and I, I, you could probably guess it because I haven't talked about it yet and it's kind of obvious, but Knack 2, yes. I love Knack 2, no, it's not Knack 2. Um, yeah, that's God of War. Yeah, just a little old game, God of War. Yeah. I don't know what to say that I didn't already cover in my God of War review. I really like that review too, so go watch that if you want to hear my full thoughts on this game. I put a lot of work into that one as well. God of War transcended gaming this generation. It did something that a lot of us didn't expect to see until next generation in so many ways. From the moment you start, it's one long adventure. You live every second in these characters' lives as it plays out. It's a game you play in real time. It's an adventure and a story you experience with the characters. And to heighten that experience from start to finish, they removed all loading screens. Sure, they hid them very cleverly and sneaky in places, but then throw all that out the window and you just have some of the best hack and slash you've ever seen. Show me something more therapeutic and awesome than throwing a friggin' axe. Just leaving it as long as you want. And then bringing that sucker back. I always wanted to dive back into the game now that I've put it down for so long. But I know that I got so good at the game. But if I tried going back into it now, I would just feel pathetic. I would really have to refresh my rusty skill set at this point. Because I played it a lot and nah. I was knocking out those Valkyries without too much issue. <laughs> now I would get decimated. If you haven't played God of War, it's it's the PlayStation 4 game. I didn't think anything would top Last of Us, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, come on. Gosh darn it, this is a great game. <laughs> oh, well, hot dang. Yeah, that's the video. I hope you guys liked it. That last video was a lot of fun to make. So this was fun to make too. I just get to stand here and blab about the games I really enjoy. Let me know what you'd like to see me do next. Either like 10 of all games or Xbox. Oh, Mega Drive. <laughs> I don't know. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you, I don't know, you have a brain. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye.